Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Uh, it's uh, We're moving through another week headed towards Thanksgiving and I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving today. Uh, I do want to apologize for not having a devotional yesterday, but we had the service uh, for Rudy Kite and uh, uh, it was just kind of a busy day and didn't didn't make it to do this. But uh, but I do want to to, to uh, talk some more about Thanksgiving today, and I, I think this is an appropriate uh, appropriate devotional. I, again, it was an email that I received, and I, I think it's appropriate to share today, especially as we're still you know still thinking a little bit about yesterday and and the loss of Rudy. And uh, the title of this is well, it's from a devotional from a book by Esther Fleece called No More Faking Fine. And it's it's basically talking about how to still give thanks, even in troubled days. And uh, I think it's a good word for us. Uh, talking about Nehemiah a little bit as we get into this. But there's, there's uh, this is a rough year. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And, and we've talked some about that, but we we just need to be, still need to be thankful. There's still so much to be thankful for, even though we, we're living in troubled times with so much going on. But uh, the Lord's still, still good. He's still God. Uh, we, we can still give, give thanks to Him. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is, God is good, even if we don't uh, necessarily feel like it sometimes. Uh, let me dig into this, uh, to this a little bit. This is it's that time of year again. Pumpkins are being put away. Christmas decor is uh, beginning to fill the stores, and there's one more big holiday to celebrate before the Christmas jingles hit the airwaves, Thanksgiving. As Christians, we know we are supposed to give thanks in all circumstances, First, First Thessalonians 5.18, and give thanks to God for everything, Ephesians 5.20. But I have a sneaky suspicion that many of us are not celebrating the holiday season like we want to be. And I know that's true, you know, especially Thanksgiving. And as we've been asked to to not have the family uh, events like we have in the past, and and to, you know, our our family's not traveling like we normally do. And I know others are doing the same thing, uh, just out of an abundance of caution and uh, with the COVID virus and everything. So we're so we're not really celebrating the holiday season like we want to be. And and uh, I think that's just just recognizing it for what it is. We we don't have to sugarcoat it. It's it's just what it is. God's still good though. So it's just this week I learned from a friend who has been struggling with infertility for years. Another friend just let me know of her pending divorce. The news headlines continue to leave us reeling. Life is hard, draining at times, and pain does not take a break when the holidays get here. Sometimes pain is more exposed around the holidays. Sometimes the holidays can expose our longings and laments, and it makes it difficult to know how to celebrate with a troubled heart. How can we give thanks when we don't feel very thankful? Uh, and I think there's some good some good words here that she has to to help us along in this uh, this journey that we're on. How can we give thanks when we don't feel very thankful? Number one, remember what God has done. Uh, look back over your life. Uh, she says, I studied laments throughout Scripture. I saw a God who invites us to remember. We are to remember the the things God has done for us in the past. We hold on to these in the present and into our future, especially when our circumstances make it difficult to remember the goodness of God. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? At this point, we, we're struggling and we may not remember the goodness of God. But if we look back over our lives, we can see God at work. We can see God, the blessings of God in our in our life. And, and like I said, we may not see them right now. I, I hope you are. I hope you're seeing them right now. But But maybe you're not. And, and if you're not, you can look back and you can remember what God has done. And, uh, uh, you know, God is still God. He's still so good. Again, like I said, it says we hold on to these in the present and into our future, especially when our circumstances make it difficult to remember the goodness of God. God knows the highs and lows that hit our life. And so he invites us to remember his faithfulness throughout the ages. Uh, something I, I often like to say to people is, you know, God's been so faithful in the past. He's not going to stop being faithful now. Uh, it's like not, it's, he hasn't just forgotten us. Uh, we, we can trust him. We, we know he's still good. He's been good in the past. He'll be good in the future. Remembering the goodness of God in the past will help us in seasons where it's harder to see him. Deuteronomy 8.11 says, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. So look back. Remember. Uh, 
the second one is remind God of his promises. I, I like this one. I thought this was a good idea. So this one can feel a little odd. After all, God is all-knowing and doesn't need us to remind him of things. Yet God invites us to remind him. In the same way a child might remind a parent, remember you said you'd take me to, to ice cream if we won the game? Um, I have three girls that like to remind me of anything I say like that. I have to be very careful about um, anything I say like that, any promises I might make, because they'll hold me to it. They won't forget. And uh, God invites us, as it says here, God invites us into a reminding prayer relationship with him. This type of reminding is not for God's sake, but usually for ours. It's good for us to remember God's promises. Again, to recognize that God's still God, that God cares for us. Uh, it's good for us to stay in communication with God when life has not gone the way we expected it to. We can remind him of his promises and he'll be faithful. The Hebrew words for remember, zakar, and not forget, lo shaka, uh, are both in active tense. They are doing verbs. Just as we take action by praying, we also take action by calling God's truth into the present, reminding him of his promises. Again, it's not to remind him, it's to remind us. Uh, when we remind him of his promises, it's, it's more speaking to our hearts, uh, not, not to his. So this practice of remembering and reminding God are found in both the Old and New Testaments. Jesus even asks us to remember him as we take communion, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. She says, the church I have been attending practices communion every week, and this has been good for me. I am being reminded of God no matter what has gone on during my week. And I am being reminded to take my prayers and pain to God. Uh, that's, that's a good word, to always be reminded to take our prayers and our pain to God, no matter what we're going through right now, no matter how difficult it might be. So the practice of remembrance can often lead our hearts to thanksgiving for our past and our hope for our future. While God will never forget or abandon us, at times we will feel forgotten. It's not that God is distant, it's just that sometimes he feels distant. I think that's a good reminder for us as well. God is never distant from us. It may seem like it, but he never is. He is always uh, close to us. If we have his spirit in us, uh, we, we he is there. He is with us always. And, and we can hold on to that. It makes such a difference when we approach life uh, in the presence of God than if we don't see him or don't feel him. Uh, and, and again, he may feel distant, but he's not. He is always present, always there. It's not that God is preoccupied. It's just that our struggles make us feel like we're facing the world alone. Um, you know, God's not bit, not busy. You can't, you know, he's, he's always present. He's always faithful. He's always there. Sometimes we need a little extra reminder around the holidays. And I, I think that is true. As we get, as we go through Thanksgiving, we get closer to Christmas. Uh, it's good to have a need. We need that extra little reminder that God is present with us, whatever we're facing. He never leaves us. He's never preoccupied. He's always there. Uh, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. So we will feel forgotten. So God will never leave us or uh, forget or abandon us. At times we will feel forgotten. It's not that God is distant. It's just that sometimes he feels distant. Sometimes we need a little extra reminder. In my book, No More Faking Fine, I share about Nehemiah and other how long laments featured or found in scripture. Nehemiah is a servant in scripture who, who practiced this type of remembrance prayer. Nehemiah remembered God. Nehemiah 4.14 says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And Nehemiah reminded God, remember my with favor, my God, for all I have done for these people. Nehemiah 5.19. Remembering and reminding are tools of our faith that we can apply to each and every season, no matter what we're going through. Know that when life is painful, it will not always stay that way. Let's remember God's faithfulness to us in the past and have hope that we will again see it in the future. And then she has a prayer here. It says, Heavenly Father, sometimes your, your help feels so far off. Please give me strength to cling to you. Give me a shield of faith, Ephesians 6. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy, Psalm 130. Hear my cry for help, Psalm 5-2. And be merciful to me, for I am faint, Psalm 6-2. And this is feeling thankful yet. Some of us are in seasons that are so easy to be that are so easy to be thankful for. Abundance, joy, new birth, newlywed joy, financial cushion. Celebrate that today. If things are going well for you, celebrate that. 
Uh, thank God for that. Uh, it says here, write it down and thank God. But some of us are in, in seasons of trial or grief, loss, tragedy, fear, struggle, loneliness. This season, friends, it will not last forever. Remember what God has done for you and remind him of his promises. You can remind God of his many, many promises. Uh, I, I think that's really, really a good word for us. Uh, you can remember and remind. Uh, remember all that God's done for you in the past. Remind him of his promises that, he finds, that we find in his word. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, help us in these days. And, and yes, it's difficult. Uh, you know, so many, you know, some have lost loved ones. Some are dealing with sickness and struggle and uh, even just the sort of the, the darkness of being forced to not be with family at Thanksgiving and, and, and facing a holidays that we just are uncertain of what's next as the numbers go up and up and up of, of COVID. And we, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done for us, all the blessings that you've poured into our life. And Lord, we just, just ask that you will continue to help us to remember that, to not get focused on the things that we don't have, but focus on what we do have. Focus on how you have blessed us and been with us. Uh, Lord, we just commit this time to you. Continue to work in us, to move in us, Lord, as we go through this week of Thanksgiving. We just want to be careful to give thanks to you for every good gift, because it all comes from you. Lord, again, you are so faithful and so true, so good. We know you're not going to stop that now. Thank you, Lord. Continue to help us as we deal with, with the coronavirus and uh, receive word Joyce Smith has it now. And Lord, we just pray you'll be with her and be with others that are dealing with, uh, with it and just pray your blessing on them, bring healing to them. Again, be with doctors and nurses and those that are helping uh, those with it. And uh, we just lift them to you. Thank you, Lord. Continue to, to heal our nation in, in other ways that we need healing. Lord, draw us back together, bring unity. Lord, we just, just pray for your blessings to be upon us. Uh, thank you, Lord. We, we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. and We'll be back tomorrow uh, with something else. You have a great, great rest of your day. Goodbye.